All right, so this time we're actually gonna get up and running with N8N and actually create our first workflow and cover the five things we covered in the previous videos. So uh, just so we're all on the same page, I'm gonna create a fresh account. I'm gonna go to N8N. I gotta click on this box here and then type in n8n-web.com. That'll take me to the N8N site where I'll click on get started. And I'll just create a demo account here. And I'll verify that I'm a human and I'll start the 14 day trial. I'll save this password. Then we got to ask some questions here. Other. No, submit. All right. Don't want to add anyone else to this. So now we just give it a few minutes. It's going to create our server for us. Okay, so now the server's online. You can click this blue start automating button and that'll take us to the workflow area. So we've seen this before in the other videos. So let's cover the five things we talked about, the five cores, uh, core components of N8N as we go through this. So you can see the big red button up here it says create workflow. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create the workflow. Once we click on that, we'll get the the big uh, grid that shows us our whole workflow. You can mouse click to drag um, and zoom in and out or up and down with the mouse wheel. Uh, zoom in and out by pressing these buttons here. Get the whole thing in view by pressing that one. Um, the first thing a workflow needs is a trigger. So that means how are we gonna start this workflow, right? So is it gonna happen every scheduled, like every five minutes or whatever? Is it gonna happen whenever a change happens to a spreadsheet or when we get an email? you determine when it starts. Um, in this example, we're just gonna do something real simple. We're gonna do when we chat to the AI or the automation. So we'll click on this add first step um, and you get the sidebar here with all the different uh, triggers. So I'm gonna click on on chat message here. And whenever you click on a node, it opens up that node's properties. Those are any settings that you can change or set for that particular node. There's nothing to change here. So we can click on back to canvas and now we see the node right there. We can pick it up and drag it with the mouse um, or we can delete it or disable it, that kind of stuff. Now this node by itself isn't very helpful, um, but you can see if you hover next to it, you get this open chat icon that comes up there button. Um, it's also available at the bottom of the screen here. If you click on that, you'll get this little box here where you can actually type something. So if I type hello or hi, You'll see it sends, and now you can see that this node has a little green check mark. That means it did the thing, right? So we sent the message using this and it worked. Um, that's why it's green. And that message had nothing to do, um, but it did work. So now we have to connect this node to another node. Um, so for this, we can either click on this circle here and drag out, or um, we can click on this plus icon here and it'll bring up another sidebar that uh, only has things that can connect to this particular node. So we're going to go ahead and pick AI because that's something you'll probably be doing a lot. And then I'm going to click on AI agent. And again, when you open this, it's going to come up with its properties. Let's just go back out of this for a second just so we can see it. Um, if your icons or your nodes get a lot of whack and you don't like how they look, uh, there's a button here, that little brush that will kind of sort everything and clean it up. So what is the AI agent node? What are all these little connectors? The first one here on the bottom left is the LLM that we're going to use. Is it, um, you know, ChatGPT or Claude or anything like that? So if we go ahead and click on that, you'll get a list of all the available um, chat models that you can use. So we'll just scroll down to the bottom and pick OpenAI. Now, when we add that, of course, we'll get a property uh, screen for that. Let's just go back so we can see it. And you can see it's got this little red uh, triangle. That means it's not properly set up. We'll get back to that. So that's the LLM that we're going to use is OpenAI. This next one here is memory. And that basically means can the agent remember stuff, right? So um, if you send it one message and you say like, um, my name is John Smith, and then you send it another message saying, what is my name? Do you want it to remember that or do you want it to have amnesia every time you talk to it? So we're not going to worry about that right now because this is going to be the super, super basic model uh, example, but um, that's just what that's for. And then the tool node here, the tool connector, 
lets you connect different tools basically to to the uh, AI agent. So like you can connect Gmail or you can connect Google Sheets, stuff like that. So that then you can ask the agent like, what's my newest email? And then it goes into your Gmail and checks for that and then comes back and says your newest email is spam from Skidbiz. Um, that kind of stuff. So uh, we're not gonna use that here. Again, super simple. And then finally, the node on the right is just another connector so that if we wanted to do something after the agent did its thing, so for instance, we asked the agent to write a joke and then it goes ahead and goes to OpenAI, writes a joke. And then what, what if we wanna send that to an email or into Slack or something like that? That's where you would connect something here to let it do that. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna keep this super simple. We're in a workflow. That was number one. These two things are nodes. That's number two. We've got this connector connecting the two nodes, right? We can delete that and then just click on this circle to reconnect them. So that's connections. The next thing we want to talk about is credentials. So if we go back into the OpenAI chat model, you'll see it's asking us a couple things in the settings. One is what credentials are you going to use? And two is which model are you going to use, right? So you need to load your credentials before it knows what models you have access to. So we don't have a credential. So we'll go ahead and click on this and create a new credential. Then we'll get this pop-up and this pop-up is, is asking us for the API key to let us access OpenAI um, ChatGPT. I don't have one available right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Google uh, OpenAI, oh, there it is, OpenAI API. And we'll get different uh, results, of course, but we want this one right here. This is platform.openai.com and API key. So if we click on that, we need to log in. Okay, so I already have an API key for my production line. So I'm just gonna click up here, create new secret key and give it a name, demo. And if we wanted to change anything like, um, you know, set a budget or anything like that, you can do that here. Um, so we'll just go ahead and create secret key. And when we do that, we'll see the secret key just one time. We'll never be able to see it again. So we wanna copy it and then go back to our workflow and paste it in here, right? Um, and then once we hit save, it should verify it. So you'll see up here, it says connection successfully uh, and we're good to go. We can close this now and now, if we open this drop down, it should show us the different uh, models that we're able to use. So I'll just pick, um, I don't know, GPT-4, why not? And now we're good to go there. So now we get out of there and you can see that red triangle went away. Now we can go ahead and actually do something with this, right? So if I go ahead and open this chat and I say hi again and hit enter, you'll see what's happening here is that the, the chat was okay and now it's going to the AI agent and that AI agent is going to open AI. And I got an error message that the agent is requesting too many things from me. I do not have uh, any budget there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some credits. All right, now that I've put some credits in there, let's see what happens if we retry this. There we go. Now we have green lights everywhere. So uh, yeah, make sure you have money in your um, ChatGPT account so that it can actually use the tokens. Um, so you can see this check mark, the green from the chat box went there. Um, it went into the AI agent, so that has a green check mark, which also went down and used the OpenAI chat model. Um, and if you click on any of this, you can see this. There, there's a chat log here. So you can see that I sent a message right here saying hi. Um, the AI agent went through and did its thing. It went to uh, OpenAI's system here, and then it came back with hello. How can I assist you again? So we'll go ahead and try this again and just say, you know, tell me a joke and hit enter. It's going to go again, come back. Um, and you can see that it responded, you know, why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything, right? So this is the most simple uh, agent that you're going to make, the most simple workflow. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and save it. Now, um, 
just so you know, if it's not, if it's a workflow that is scheduled or um, if it's a form or something like that, creating it here is kind of like in, uh, in like beta mode. So it's not publicly accessible and it won't work on its own. Um, you need to go ahead and make it active for that. So you see up here, it says inactive. If you just click that, um, this will activate the workflow. So like I said, if it's scheduled or anything like that, this will actually kick that off and make it make it be scheduled. So what do we have? We have our workflow, which is this whole thing. We have our nodes, which is these two uh, sections here with that um, chat model as well. Uh, we have the connections, which is the lines connecting everything. And we uh, had credentials, right? So we saw how to connect our personal API to this system so that um, the agent can use it. And then finally, we'll have execution. So you can see we've run this a few times. Um, how do you know that? Well, you saw me do it, but also you can click up here where it says executions. And if you click on that, you'll get this sidebar here that shows you every time it ran. And you can see where it failed those two times when I was trying stuff um, and when it succeeded, right? And so you can click on any of these and see all of the data that happened during that execution. So right here, we've clicked on this one back here. If I click on this checkbox or on the first node, you can see that I wrote hi and got the response, you know, hi, how can I assist you again? And if I click on the latest one, you'll see that, um, you know, the prompt was tell me a joke. And the response was, why don't scientists trust atoms? So you can see every single execution of your workflow. And if there's any problems, you can go back and try to figure out what caused that problem by seeing, you know, the nodes here um, and looking at the little logs over here, the little messages that come from it. So you can see this one said I exceeded my quota. And that's how I knew that, hey, I don't have any money in there. So, um, yeah, this is how you would look at it. That's the final step executions. And then you can go back to overview, see all of your nodes, or all of your workflows, all of your credentials, all of your executions. You can see all that from here. So that's it, your first workflow, congratulations. It's the one you'll probably use the most. Um, so let's keep going. Let's get, we got some momentum. Let's see uh, what else we can create. I'll see you in the next one.